My friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, welcome to this time of worship at First Presbyterian Church of Garner. Welcome to a time of refuge and renewal as we remember again how we are held together in the bonds of Jesus Christ, of the God who loves us. Welcome to all of you who are here in person, those who might be worshiping with us online. Welcome members, guests, visitors, friends. Welcome all who have come into this holy place today. Today, in this place, our journey through 1 Corinthians and Paul's words to the church of then, now, and next continues. And we dive into a portion of that letter with a perhaps familiar image of the church as the body of Christ. As we consider our identity as Christ's body today and how that identity shapes and guides us, may we hold fast to the truth that indeed, as the body of Christ, we know that means we are never alone, that we are always, always unified in the love that God has given us through Jesus. Let anything that would seek to tear us apart then learn well from that truth. Part of the way that we know that is true is because of the continuing fellowship that we enjoy as a church. And in our announcements this morning, you can see many, many examples of that fellowship and service and study, and also simply in presence and especially food. <laughs> so as I share those announcements with you, I do invite you to take the uh, pad on the center of the aisle to sign it, pass it along for others to sign, so we can see uh, who is worshiping with us this morning. Um, first, just to direct your attention to our different inserts. First, our pink insert uh, that has our general announcements as well as prayer concerns. Please do read over that and uh, save it and respond as you feel led. And then note also as we continue February being Heart Health Month, our wellness ministry team has another message about heart health for us. And on the other side is a reminder, uh, also after worship today, our Super Bowl uh, Sunday luncheon fundraiser that we hope everyone will come to. I can't think of a better kind of day to uh, enjoy with some hot soup uh, amidst all of the rain and the cold. So I do hope that you will come and be a part of that. We do have to-go uh, availability uh, for that as well, so if you can't stay long, you can get uh, some soup to go enjoy that time of warm friendship. And then also note our other insert uh, that shares about um, a program coming up that will be facilitated by Family Promise of Wake County. Um, we have partnered with this organization for seven years and are planning to do so again uh, this Lent during Holy Week. Um, and they are going to come and help us, though, think uh, about homelessness in Wake County. I was with Habitat for Humanity earlier on Saturday morning, and they let us know that there's over 50,000 50, people without home all across our state. And Habitat for Humanity, each chapter builds about 50 houses a year, which is no small thing, but it's just a drop in the bucket. And so part of our luncheon on the 26th uh, will be a time to learn more about what is going on uh, with so many of our neighbors and how we can continue to think about that and address it as our church family. But that's not the only food we have. You'll also see in that pink insert that in between today's Super Bowl and that 26th barbecue, uh, we also have a Presbyterian Women event on the 19th. Um, and you can see the information about that joint meeting um, in the insert as well. Um, also about Presbyterian women, um, please make a note that the Lily Circle wants uh, everyone to know they are meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at the home of Regina Alexander. Um, and Sandra Hodge says if you would like to carpool or just simply need a ride, let her know and she'll meet you at the church uh, so that you can go 
in uh, the company of good friends uh, to get to Regina's. Um, That is the Lily Circle, which meets tomorrow night. Um, Also, on the other side of that uh, Family Promise insert is your glimpse of all the different programs we have coming up for Lent. Uh, Worship services that we will enjoy with White Memorial Willow Springs, as well as different Bible studies uh, that continue and will have a Lenten theme. And then also our Presbyterian Lenten program, which will be on practices of prayer. It's a little bit different uh, than some of the Bible studies we have, and we're not going to be examining necessarily a particular book of the Bible, but we will be learning about prayer with some scriptural reflection on certain practices of it. And there will be two options for you to attend, either by Zoom on Tuesday nights or in person on Sunday mornings um, to learn and to develop that discipline of prayer through the season of Lent. Um, I also want to update you on what the choir has uh, been keeping me up to date on, and that is they are finally, finally, after uh, companies being bought out and items being on back order, uh, they are finally ready to begin measuring for new choir robes, Um, and they're going to look awesome. Um, They are purple, I'm told, and they're just going to be beautiful. So they are starting the process of doing the measurements for them, Once the order is placed, it'll be about nine weeks, they say, uh, for the robes to come in. Um, So we are close, Easter, cross fingers, maybe a little bit after, um, but the choir will have their new choir robes. And uh, we are so thankful for all who donated to that fund. Um, uh, And it has been a process, but we are finally drawing close uh, to that. So thank you for your support and your persistence and patience through that as well. Let me remind you, too, that if you have anything that would like you would like to be in the church newsletter, The Spire, the deadline for that is February uh, 20th in about eight days. So uh, please do be thinking about those articles you might prepare uh, to have uh, for that time. Also, beginning this week, that we will start a feminine health Uh, hygiene item drive in conjunction with community navigators and community builders. So next Sunday, um, please try to bring items, if you can, for that health item drive. And then finally, a note on our order of worship. Um, Our liturgist for today is Mike Koenig, rather than Lucy Whipple. We got dates inverted and mixed up when we printed our bulletins. Um, But Mike is leading us today. And so I would call upon him now to do that leading us in the call to worship. You know, if those purple choir robes had a gold trim, you'd make people at ECU and LSU, like me, (laughs) very, very happy. Okay, if you'd now join me in the call to worship, uh, which is printed in your bulletin, I will read the light print and you will, uh, will read the dark print. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Like precious oil poured on the head, like the dew falling on the mountain. For among us the Lord bestows his blessing, like forevermore. Please stand as you are able and join in singing our opening hymn number 401, Here in This Place.
Please, friends, you may be seated. Let us now, sisters and brothers in Christ, call upon the name of our God, who loves us with an everlasting love and hears our confessions, our broken places, our sins, with mercy always. Let us pray our prayer of confession, which you find printed in your bulletin, and then share in silent confession as well. With one heart and voice, we pray. Holy God, we confess that we bow down before other gods. We have turned our hearts away from you. We judge our neighbors. We dwell in indignation. We become divided from those we should love. Forgive us, God, and mend what is broken, that we may be one with you and with each other. Amen. Christ, have mercy. Amen. Friends, take heart. God is our rock and our fortress. The Holy One is stored up in abundance of goodness for those of us who take refuge in God. In Christ, all things hold together. And through the Holy Spirit, we are reconnected and revitalized is God's new and good creation. So when we trust and share and always live the good news, may we be resurrected as the body of Christ, proclaiming always this good news of the gospel. In Christ we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. As forgiven people, let us also proclaim the peace that Christ has given us with our call and response, and then by sharing signs and words, gestures of peace with one another. Friends, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and also with you. Let us share peace with one another. You may be seated. I'd like to invite all of our young disciples to come up for a conversation with the young and young at heart. 
I'm going to sit kind of and hear our prayer shawl for the world, which coincidentally today looks like the colors of the eagles. I don't know if that was God's providence or not. Some people think, no, it should look like red and yellowish, orange, something like that. Y'all sit down with me. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Um, so I want to tell you this morning um, about a Super Bowl. All right? A Super Bowl. Um, and not just the Super Bowl that's going to be played tonight, and not just the Super Bowl that we are having after worship. I want to tell you about uh, something called the Super Bowl of Caring. The Super Bowl of Caring. And it's spelled like the Super Bowl we have today. S O U P. E R, super. Get it? Nate feels like a dad came up with that because that's such a dad joke, <laughs> um, and it probably was. But um, the Super Bowl of caring. Now, the Super Bowl of caring started like 1990. 1990. None of you were born yet when this started. In 1990, really? You're 33. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. <laughs> You look good for your age, Noah. Um, But what happened was there was this church in Columbia, South Carolina. And the uh, intern, they had an intern who was in seminary at the time studying to become a pastor. And he prayed a prayer on the morning of the Super Bowl game. All right, so a morning just like this one. And he prayed a prayer, and I'm not going to get the quote exactly right, but it went something like this. He said, um, even as we prepare uh, for um, a Super Bowl, um, help us remember those who don't even have a bowl of soup to eat. And so this uh, seminary intern, he was working with the youth, people your age, um, maybe a little younger than you are, Noah. Um, uh, uh, and, And so they came up with an idea for the following year to do a special kind of offering. They had other churches to join with them, and they raised $5,000 for uh, folks who needed food around Columbia, South Carolina. And it continued the next year. More churches got involved, and then the next year, more churches got involved, and then the next year and the next year, and not only churches got involved, but some businesses got involved. And eventually, even the NFL itself has gotten involved with what's called the Super Bowl of Caring Offering. And it's now an even bigger organization called Tackle Hunger. Get it? That's another dad joke kind of thing. Tackle Hunger, right? Um, and they have, in the time that they have, have, have been operational, they have raised over $100 million over the last 30-plus years for food insecurity. And the way they do it is so simple. It's so, so simple, just like that prayer was simple. Basically, the Super Bowl of Caring, um, all over churches everywhere, all across our country, even internationally, there's going to be young people with baskets, and some of them even with soup pots, right? Because, you know, some people like those kind of jokes. And they are going to take some donations of, like, loose change, maybe a little folding, something or other, Um, and it's a lot like the two cents a meal offering we do, and they're going to take that money, and they're going to donate it to local food causes and their community, so people are collecting in California will donate it to California, people collecting in Philadelphia will donate it to Philadelphia, people collecting in Kansas City will donate to Kansas City, people collecting in Raleigh, North Carolina will donate to Raleigh, North Carolina, any city you can think of, they're going to collect it and donate it to there. So um, I think that's really awesome, because even with the lame jokes aside, uh, it's really cool that something so simple, a prayer, a couple of cents, can make a difference to so many, especially when you add it up. So that's one thing I think is really cool. Second thing I think is really cool is we get a chance to do that today. Normally we do our two cents a meal offering uh, at the last Sunday of the month, but you know, I, I, I kind of forgot to announce it on the last Sunday of the month. 
Um, so that's one thing. But then the second thing, I was like, well, you know what? That's great, because now we can do it on Super Bowl Sunday. We can be part of that effort that is collecting uh, money for food uh, all over uh, the country. So, again, what's going to happen, what's going to happen is that during the offering, y'all are going to come up with your baskets along with our ushers, and then you're going to let them go, and they're going to get maybe like a couple of pews ahead of you, and then you'll go down with the baskets, and if folks have some extra loose change, they can donate to that. That'll be great. Um, if you don't have any to donate today, you could donate sometime in the week ahead. Just call the church office and you could do that. And then we're going to give it to our Ida Joy Bible study because they're the ones that really know the work on the ground and they help us figure out who we're going to use that offering to support. So remember that. Remember that what you're doing this morning, even though it might seem small or kind of lame because your dad asked you to help, um, is actually something really important and really impactful. And y'all all remember that too. Even a little change can lead to a lot of change in the world that really needs it. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God, indeed, as we prepare for uh, soup in a little bit, as we prepare for a Super Bowl tonight, do keep us mindful of those who don't have a bowl of soup to eat. And help us give what we have so that others may be well fed by your love and grace in body and in spirit. Thank you for these who will help contribute to that mission. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. I'll let y'all know when it's time to come up to help collect that offering.
Let us pray for illumination. God, hold us fast, we pray. Gather our scattered thoughts so that we may hear and respond to the love you have given us. Through your word read and your word made flesh in Christ. Amen. Our first reading today is from the 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of these tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. And continuing now in 1 Corinthians 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greek, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, use us. O Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh on us. Amen. So, my friends, today we are almost, but not quite yet, through our journey in selected highlights of Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. A message to the church 
then that is still important for the church now and next. But I wonder, after hearing portions of chapter 12, is anyone else ready to say politely but firmly, Paul, we get it. Seriously, you've told us over and over the same thing now for four weeks. We get it. We belong. We are held together by Christ and no other. The church, we get it. The church should be about unity and this kind of togetherness centered in Christ. We're, we're a body arranged in a way so that all typical notions and labels about status and privilege are upended by the foolish and extravagant love of God we know in Christ. We get it, Paul. That love values every gift, every individual. It lifts up, especially those who are so often overlooked and dismissed, and says, you are valuable. You matter. You also have something to serve the common good. We get it, Paul, truly. Can't we get on to something new? I mean, I mean, how about that chapter 13 and all the love stuff? Can't we, can't we get to that? Notice I said anyone else. Because I confess that I had that sort of reaction when I first was preparing this text this week. Until that is, I remembered Erica, a sixth grader, a member of the first church I served. Truthfully, Erica was not that active in most youth ministry activities. Sunday night here, a service project there, occasionally on Sundays. Erica was a gifted singer, and so she spent most of her free time with school choir or playing the guitar with her dad. Like a lot of young people that age, she was also navigating various social circles, dealing with the push-pull of who she was going to be and how others would perceive her, trying at all times to remain cool, which admittedly, church really wasn't. That's how I knew when she signed up for the Massanetta Middle School Conference, it wasn't really Erica's idea. Her mom insisted she go, and she, Erica, didn't seem too happy about it. During the five-hour van trip and for much of the first day, she remained quiet with an air of benign disinterest that only teenagers can really muster. Until after lunch on the second day, a group was going up the hill to where we were staying, and suddenly Erica linked arms with two others and began singing and smiling, laughing, connected to the body in the most uncool, joyful way imaginable. And it was amazing to see that emerge to see her drop all pretenses and share fully her gifts, which included kindness and insight, gratitude, and silly, silly songs. She got it. 
Without a doubt, she got it. That message about being loved and valued by God, that message Paul shares about belonging and about how the church's identity is the body of Christ, helps us resist putting on other masks we can feel forced to wear, helps us put away divisiveness and division. And I was already making plans for all the new things she and others might learn once we got back home. But after the conference ended, as the van made its way back to the church parking lot, I saw in real time Erica slowly and steadily and surely take a step back. The smile flattened out. Her voice got quieter. The silliness vanished. When her mom picked her up and asked how did it go, it was like that trip up the hill never happened. Fine was her only word on the subject. She got it. She really did. Until she didn't. And of course, I've had my own moments like that. I've been, Erica, only God knows how many times. Bouncing back and forth between the joy of being part of Christ's body and the reality of pressures, internal and external, that push and pull in opposite directions that urge me to continue valuing status and wealth and privilege above all else, that continue to tell me that I'm defined more about what others might admire or see as successful or cool rather than by the identity God gives us. The identity God gives us as being a part of the body. Valued not for what I can do on my own, but what I do with and for others. No matter how uncool or foolish that notion may be. And only God knows too, then, how Grateful I am for the continual speaking of a gospel word. The word Paul shares today, which says even when we ignore or forget or choose something else, even when we think we have it, until we don't. Christ's love and grace still holds me. Erica, you all of us together. Writer Anne Lamont suggests that this word ultimately is also what the church most needs to share with the world. She writes, quote, What do I want to hear at a gathering like church? I want to hear me too. I have that too. I know what that feels like. Jesus knew what it feels like. Jesus often said, it's very hard here. Have you eaten? Look, you all stick together, go to the beach, and have some fish. Share what you have. We'll talk later. I want to hear, she continues, I want to hear someone remind me that if I want to have loving feelings, I need to do loving things. I want someone to make me laugh about our shared humanity and cuckoo-ness. I want someone to remind me that laughter is carbonated holiness. I just want to hear that I'm loved and chosen and welcomed no matter what a mess I've made of things. 
then it will get better, although maybe not tomorrow, right after lunch. I want to hear that you and God will never leave me alone. That I'm not nuts for finding life hard, magical, brutal, gorgeous, unfair, hilarious, sweet, wild, and mysterious all at once. Or that if I am nuts, she concludes, you're nuts too. And we are so lucky to be together in this jar. And so delicious. I dare say that Anne Lamont is not the only one who needs to hear such a word. Because even if it has been told many times, even if we get it, it bears repeating. Friends, you are the body of Christ, and individually we are all members of it. We are held together in a love that will not let us go. We are all in this together and never, never alone. Remember that good news as long as you can. Say it aloud to yourself and to others as often as you can. Let it be what we are known by. But if any of us forget, take a deep breath and know that will be all right too. Because we can trust an ever faithful God will tell us again and again and again until we've really really gotten it. To God be the glory as we listen and as we speak. Let us pray. O oh God, having heard your word read and proclaimed, we ask that you take and seal it upon our heart so we might live faithful lives to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This time, I'd like to invite you to stand again as you're able as we sing hymn number 300. We are one in the Spirit.
affirm our faith as we use an excerpt from the Confession of Belhar, the newest addition to the Presbyterian Book of Confessions. Our ushers are, uh, for two cents a meal, are coming on, and they're going to stand uh, up here until we do the offering. Um, uh, but we will join now in our affirmation of faith. Let us with one heart and voice confess the faith of the church. We believe that Christ's work of reconciliation is made manifest in the church as the community of believers who have been reconciled with God and with one another. That unity is therefore both a gift and an obligation for the church of Jesus Christ, that through the working of God's Spirit, it is a binding force, yet simultaneously a reality which must be earnestly pursued and sought, one which the people of God must continually be built up to attain, that this unity must become visible so that the world may believe that separation, enmity, and hatred between people and groups is sin which Christ has already conquered, and accordingly that anything which threatens this unity may have no place in the church and must be resisted. Friends, let us pray. O oh God of all grace and goodness, O oh God of abundant giving, we thank you for so, so much in this world. For all your good gifts of time and family, of love and friendship. We thank you, O oh Lord, that our tables today especially are spread and open. We thank you for those who prepared soup. We ask again, O oh Lord, to make us mindful of those who don't know where their next meal might come, whose table remains bare and empty if it exists at all. We pray for all those who hurt, who struggle, who suffer, and who need a reminder that they also were honored, that they also have dignity in your eyes. May we be known, therefore, O oh God, as we have sung by our love, by the love you have given us and that we seek to continue to share. Help us trust in that love when we feel threatened, alone, scared, overwhelmed. And help us give that love knowing it never runs out. That all, all who receive it can also share it with us. So lead us now in that love, O oh God. As we pray, as we give thanks, as we offer concern, as we offer our gifts and offerings, as we again hear the good news that you are with us, and that in Jesus Christ you never let us go. For we pray in his name, praying also as he taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so as our friends are reminding us, it is time. It's time to give our gifts of resources are gifts of love. Uh, as the ushers come forward, I will hand them their plates, and then uh, as the music starts, everyone will go. Give as you are able, give what you can, give in thanksgiving to God.
Holy God, may the gifts we bring and the ones who bring them be blessed and used for your loving purpose in the world. We give these gifts in the name of Christ, who gives all to us. Amen. And now, friends, we will remain standing as we sing our sending hymn, number 306, Blessed Be the Tithe That Binds. soup is on. Uh, so may we also share a blessing for that food, thanking God for all that God has done, for all preparing all the hands to make it and all the mouths and stomachs that will enjoy it. Um, may we be truly blessed as we eat and gather for fellowship. And may we be blessed also as we go from this place to do the next thing God has for us to do. May we go from this place as one body to live our hope and not our fear. And as we go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted upon you and give you peace. Alleluia and amen. Let us sing, go now in peace.